Hey guys, let's see some of the important and interesting thing about Helminthes. So what is Helminthes? What is Helminthes means worms. So study of worms, we call it as Helminthology. Helminthology. According to the animal kingdom, we have three phylums which will be denoting regarding Helminthology. The very first thing is Platyhelminthes. The second thing is Asclehelminthes. And next, Annelida. Okay. So, coming to the Platyhelminthes, we otherwise call flatworms. So, let me tell you some of the examples for this Platyhelminthes. That is Dugesia. So, which is a Platyhelminthes. Example, we call it as Planaria. And we have the flukes. So, liver fluke, blood fluke. And we have the tapeworm, which is Tinea solium. Got it? And next we have the bovine worm, pork worm. We have different worms as well. So coming to the platyhelminthes, here the entire body is dorsiventrally flattened, which will be leaf-like. That's why the name plati, which means flat, helminthes, worms. Okay. So coming to the planaria, planaria will be free-living and non-parasitic. So even in platyhelminthes also, we have three classes. Turbalaria, Trematoda, Cestoda. And next, Asclehelminthes. Asclehelminthes we otherwise call roundworms. Okay. It is cylindrical in structure, but on cross section it looks round. That's why we call it as roundworm. So we have many different uh, roundworms. I'll give you just some simple examples. For example, pinworm. Mostly these are parasites for vertebrates. Pinworm. So, which is Enteroboeus vermicularis and whipworm. Next, hookworm and cyclostoma. Roundworm, which is Ascaris. Filarial worm. Uchereria. Uchereria bancrofti, which causes the elephantiasis. So these are the worms, which is round. And one more thing, uh, Annelida, which is earthworm. Earthworm. And Tubifora. Neris. Leeches. Hyridine leeches. So these things are will come under worms. So flat worms, round worms, and you will be having the uh, ring ring bearing worms, which is Annelida. And uh, ring worm is doesn't comes under this category. Ring worm is actually fungal infection. That's why you should not tell Annelida as ring worm. You have to call it as segmented worm. So coming to the Platyhelminthes, you will be having triploblastic nature. In platyhelminthes, you can find the many first things. Triploblastic, first time you will see the triploblastic thing. First time you will see the sorry, the first time you will see the triploblastic thing and the very first time you will see the organ grade organization. Okay, so these are the first things you will see in platyhelminthes. And coming to the excretory organs, here it is flame cells or solenocytes or protonephridia. When it comes to Asclehelminthes, you will be having pseudocelum. So triploblastic, pseudocelum, and bilaterally symmetrical animals. And coming to the Platyhelminthes are also bilaterally symmetrical. And Annelida is also bilaterally symmetrical, triploblastic, coelomate. So when it comes to the coelom, for all the three worms, you have three different types of coelom. Platyhelminthes will be having a coelomate. And Asclehelminthes is pseudocelum. Annelida is eucelomate, which means true coelom. And 
So these are the difference between platyhelminthes, asclehelminthes, and annelida. One more thing about excretory system is here for the platyhelminthes, the excretory organs are flame cells or solino or uh, protonephridia or solenocytes. For asclehelminthes, it is Rennet cells. And for annelida, for annelida, it will be nephridia. So uh, these are the excretory system differences. When it comes to the circulatory system, for platyhelminthes and asclehelminthes, there is no circulatory system. And for annelida, you have a closed circulatory system with hemoglobin dissolved in plasma. Okay. And com coming to the next sexes, platyhelminthes uh, will be having bisexual or hermaphrodite, just like annelida. Annelida is also bisexual and uh, hermaphrodite. But neris, when it comes to neris, you can see the unisexual thing. Neris is unisexual. And asclehelminthes, first time you can see the sexual dimorphism, especially for ascaris. The male ascaris will be smaller with uh, a curve on their caudal end. And the female ascaris will be bigger uh, with no curve on its caudal end. So that's how uh, the platyhelminthes, asclehelminthes and annelida will differ. Let me tell you the classes for platyhelminthes. For flatworms, it has been divided into three classes. Turbal area, Crematoda and Cestoda. Under turbal area, you will get a free living forms and parasitic as well and ectocommensalism. And the best example for turbal area is Dugesia, which is planaria, which is the masters of regeneration as well. And under Trematoda, you will be getting the flukes. So like cystosoma, which is liver blood fluke and uh, fasciola hepatica, which is liver fluke. And next cestoda. These are exclusively parasites, exclusive endoparasites you can see in cestoda. But in trematoda, you can see the free living as well as parasitic forms, but more parasitic will be there in trematoda. But cestoda, you'll be seeing exclusively parasites. For example, tapeworm, which is tinea solium. And we have the bovine tapeworm, pork tapeworm like that. And when it comes to the next, that is roundworms. For roundworms, you will be having two classes. So phasmida, a phasmida. Phasmida are the sensory structures which is present in the caudal end of the worm. If the phasmid is present, we call it as phasmida. If the phasmid is absent, then we call it as a phasmida. And next, we have the segmented worms. So under segmented worms, you have the four categories, four classes. You have polychaetae based on the chaetae. Kite or Cite, both are same. Oligo Kite. Under Poly Kite, you will get the Neris. And under Oligo Kite, you will get Earthworm. And next, you have Hyrudine. And finally, you have Arachianelida. So and under Hyrudine, you have all the leeches. So these are the classes of platform, roundworm, and segmented worms. So this is a little bit information for the competitive exams that you are going to write regarding the worms. Thank you.